distinguished guests, country representatives, local and international investors, all protocol observed, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. It is a pleasure to welcome you to the Africa Trade and Investment Summit. I am very honored to be your master of ceremony for this prestigious event. We have a truly exceptional line of speakers and guests with us here tonight and today. Our aim for today's summit is to promote and showcase Ethiopia's vast and uh, many trade and investment opportunities and provide a platform for key players to explore and expand their business ventures. Once again, I welcome you to the Africa Trade and Investment Summit. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's please have a round of applause for everyone here today. Lovely. Now let's get started with our first program. I am thrilled to introduce our first speaker, Mr. Abdinasser Turkey, Chairman and CEO of the Investment Center of Africa. Mr. Turkey will provide us with his opening remarks to set the tone for the event. Please welcome him with a warm round of applause. Your Excellency, Mr. Hassan Mohammed Mohammed, the State Minister of the Ethiopian District Ministry. Your Excellency, Mr. Emilio Mokalan, the State Minister of the Ethiopian Trade and Regional Integration. The Honorable Mr. Almanzo Tedesi, the President of Israel and South African Trade and Development Bank. Your Excellency, Ambassador Abdul Yassin. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to all of you. In the name of the Ethiopia the Ethiopia will not be judging. It is the Naraki Ethiopia. Subhanallah, excellent community. I am very glad that I welcome all of you to this international summit in Africa. Today, I am investing in this summit on this day, June 6, 2023. I would like to thank to all of you for your participation and your response to this, for attending this international summit. I am also pleased to see many distinguished and high level speakers on the program schedule today, and to welcome many delegates from different countries. Ladies and gentlemen, to open the summit, as many of you may already know, this is our first Africa Trade and Investment Summit hosted by the Investment Center of Africa, which is an important platform and source for innovations and new business and investment opportunities. And it is time for information and ideas. It is also an international gathering for market information shared by the international and regional expertise, and discussing how to take advantage of the opportunities available between African companies and the foreign businesses and investors. As we all know, the African countries are distinguished from other countries in the world by many advantages, including African countries are rich in diversified resources that are not available in many other countries of the world, including agricultural, livestock, mineral, and oil wealth, and others. Africa is characterized by population growth with an estimated population of 1.4 billion. The percentage of the young people, the lack of force is high. The rate of economic growth in some countries has been high in recent years. Africa is the land of investment opportunities in many ways. All these advantages are not made the world is a stand to the African continent to invest in it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the platform of Investment Center of Africa, with the aim of promoting investment and trade within Africa and the world. We extend our thanks and appreciation to the government of Ethiopia that supported and cooperated with us and contributed to the success of this summit. And our sponsors and other supporting partners and partners. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I would like to conclude by speak the role of the Western Center of Africa on this Island International Summit and our next summit, which we hope will be better and more attended, and that we will always achieve our goal necessity to create to create and work to create a social and economic integration for the Africa and world business leaders. We aim to ensure that all our services are accessible, effective and beneficial driving business and investment in global and Africa. The next achieve of the Honorable Colin, State Minister of the Ministry of Trade and Regional Integration. The next achieve Mr. Afnas Turkey, Chairman and CEO of the Investment Center of Africa. The next achieve of our Masoud Fabese, Eastern and Southern Africa, Trade and Development Park, Israel. The next achieve Ambassador Abu Yassin, General Director of Policy and University Affairs of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Government Officials, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. On the behalf of the Ministry of Industry of the Federal Government of Ethiopia and myself, let me extend my warm welcome to all of you to the Africa Trade and Investments Annual Summit. I would also like to extend my warmest appreciation and gratitude to the Investment Center of Africa for holding this year's annual summit here in Ethiopia and its dedication to promote trade, investment, and business opportunities in Ethiopia. The Africa Trade and Investment Summit, organized by the Investment Center of Africa, is a premier annual event dedicated to promote and facilitate job creation, trade, business relationships, and investment in Africa. The 2023 Ethiopia Summit will serve as a launching point for expanding existing trade, investment, and industrial relationships, and creating new, new opportunities for Ethiopia, Ethiopians and foreign business companies and also investors. I could not think of a better place than Ethiopia to have this summit on trade and investment in Africa. As Ethiopia is recently ranked among the Africa's top five foreign direct investment destinations and at number one in East Africa with an inflow of 4.54 billion US dollars in 2021. Its geography proximity to key markets and its world-class air rank and, and air connectivity gives Ethiopia market access to 3.5 billion people within eight hours of flight from Addis Ababa. Ethiopia is a country with a population of over 120 million people and a growing economy. The government has made a commitment to attract foreign investors. And there are a number of sectors that offers a great potential for investors. The political reform that began in 2018 has actually an economic opening and a liberalization under the umbrella of the Home Global Economic Reform Agenda. The reform agenda rapidly focuses on ease of new business and the innovative environment to attract quality, private investment and the foreign private sector, economic structural transformation. Some of the most promising policy sectors of the, for the investment in Ethiopia includes agriculture, agro-processing, manufacturing, tourism, mining, and ITC. Yes, and gentlemen, the manufacturing sector being one of the priorities of the government has been promoting the sector to foreign investors by developing 22 state of art specialized industry parks, of which are four are integrated agro industry parks developed by regional governments in the Amhara, Arabia, Tigray, and Islam regions. Implementing a new strategy and developing a new manufacturing industry policy for real transformation of the sector. The national movement title is Ethiopia Tabot which means that Ethiopia produce has been a flagship initiative that my 
private sector investing in the manufacturing industry for real economic impact. These parks and the various incentives introduced to attract private investment in these priority sectors have indeed brought a large number of foreign investors bringing with them a much needed capital, technology, and know-how to, to transform the Ethiopian economy. Ladies and gentlemen, the outlook of the Ethiopian economy and the for the trade and the investment opportunities in Ethiopia is very promising as we're looking forward to the future and the Ethiopian government will continue to press forward with the new reforms and the innovative initiatives to achieve its sustainable development goals or SDIG. Finally, I encourage you to utilize the resource Ethiopia is endowed with and explore the trade and investment opportunities in Ethiopia. The country has a lot of, of lot to offer for investors, and I believe Ethiopia will be a great place to do business in the years to come. I really thank you. Mr. Nasser, Turkey Chairman and CEO of Investment Center of Africa, Your Excellency Ambassador Abdul Yassin, Public Diplomacy Director General Minister of Foreign Affairs, Your Excellency Ambassador Tardesan, respected guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for me to be here for the sake of forwarding my keynote speech on the global agenda of trade and investment, particularly on the context of Africa. Currently, my maximum is that Africa can be an opportunity of champion in relation to trade and investment in a global market. But it needs Africa goes much deeper and deeper particularly related to continental market in and African countries, for example, in AFCFT, African Trade Continental Free Trade Area, and other economic regional integration. Expansion of infrastructure like road access, laboratory facilities, and networking. Focus on improving quality products and service, establishing peace and security, all the strengthening of institutional capacity building, etc. In order to be competitive in trade and investment, Africa also to address its bottleneck, the procedure, create a conducive platform for the development of the sector, like policy revisions, as in the start of business, revive the improve the tax related issues, updating price legal frameworks, commercial codes, for conditions, regulations, and directives. Making it easier to start a business, streamlining the procedure by setting up one-stop shopping, making procedures simpler or faster by introducing technology, and reducing or eliminating minimum capital requirements, Many have undertaken the business registration reform in stage, and they often are part of a large regulatory reform program. In the case of Ethiopia, designing and implementing a lot of relevant and fundamental reform has been carried out in order to promote trade and investment. This has to show practically on the ground, building a huge industrial parks in all corners of the country, encouraging private industry and investment companies, investing foreign investors, facilitating the financial supply for investors, that's getting credit as a priority, as a high priority, and starting a business was extremely tough. The requirement for publication of a company name in a newspaper for a national circulation, at least 15 days waiting ahead of a business registration is eliminated and replaced by a new 
web-based online business registration and licensing system. This has been fully implemented. For a starting business, a number of procedures from 11 to 5, days from 32 to 4, by merging TIN number, VAT, pension registration, and so on, and by merging issuance of business license and commercial registration, as well as eliminating our delegation of authentication issues as well. Our next move going to be the number of procedures from five to two, days from four to one. The requirements of lease or rental agreement as a proof of physical address to get a business registration and licenses also removed, improve access to electricity and etc. Generally, we have achieved a lot over the past four years as part of homegrown economic reform. I am excited about the business prospect for the future. I believe that the combination of cultural shifts, policy innovations, and better ease of doing business will fuel Ethiopia and ultimately Africa's growth, lifting millions of people out of poverty and creating a global impact. Finally, I congratulate the Investment Center of Africa for taking the initiative to organize this summit. And I would like to express my great thanks. I wish a fruitful day. I thank you. Excellencies, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols are observed. Good morning. My name is Harag. I'm from Ethiopian Investment Commission, AIC. I'm here on behalf of Her Excellency Commissioner Leili Seiname. It's my uh, honor to speak at this important event, enabling Ethiopia to promote what we have to offer the rest of the world regarding investment opportunities. I would first and foremost like to thank the organizers for their unwavering efforts in making the summit a reality. It's a pleasure working with Investment Center of Africa and other stakeholders, and we look forward to such many more collaborative efforts we will take under, um, we will uh, undertake to make the lives of Africans far better than it's today. We are at the time where Africa is making its history. And massive changes from north to south and east to west. A class of committed and transformative leaders are through their sound foreign relations strategies and inclusive leadership styles showing their determination to give Africans that brighter future we Africans deserve. It's not news that the, the Ethiopian government is undergoing a massive reform agenda, such as investment and trade, economic, political, security, foreign policy, education, and other sector reforms under the leadership of His Excellency Prime Minister Dr. Abiy Ahmed. We strongly believe in growing together and ensuring no African gets left behind. Africans for Africans and African solution for African problems. Ethiopia is also determined, now more than ever, to bring regional integration and in different aspects. To that end, Ethiopia has started providing visa on arrival to African, Africans with hopes of encouraging the free movement of people and is a signatory and moving force behind the continental free trade area safety. Ethiopian Airlines has also signed into the single Africa air travel market with the hopes of making travel easier for all African airlines on our African skies. In conclusion, on behalf of the Ethiopian Investment Commission, I would like to extend my important message Ethiopia presents 
a lucrative and profitable market for investors across the world. Please come and invest in Ethiopia and this land of opportunities. Thank you so much. God bless Ethiopia, God bless Africa and the entire world. Thank you so much. Good morning. Ahlan wa sahlan. Bonjour. I represent 25 African countries, so I have to be very inclusive, building on some of the very interesting uh, greetings we had this morning. As you've heard, my name is Admasu. I uh, have the great pleasure to respond to the kind invitation of Atul Hassan Muhammad, who hijacked me yesterday at another function, and he said, given your role and the institution you represent, you have to be here, and I'm very happy to be here. The topic of African trade and investment is very close to my heart and is central to the mandate of the institution that I lead. Just a few words at the outset on who TDB is. Uh, you've heard that we're called the Trade and Development Bank of Eastern and Southern Africa. Today we cover Central Africa, we cover West Africa, we cover parts of North Africa. So we're in the process of reflecting on our name as well. Senegal, Ghana are also now members of the bank. We operate on that part of the continent, as well, of course, as the entire eastern seaboard of, of Africa, all the way from Egypt down to Mozambique, all the islands, Seychelles, Madagascar. And I'm very pleased to recognize here in the conference this morning, uh, one of my clients over 15 years, Madame Amina Hersimogheh. Madame, such a pleasure to see you. She's been a client of my bank for over 10 years, a very successful entrepreneur in Uganda. She's won many awards. Very pleased to be associated with you, madam. She happens to be uh, wearing many different hats, which makes us even more excited as TDB to support entrepreneurs who think beyond their own narrow regions or countries. Uh, she's obviously operating between Uganda and Kenya. She's now looking at Ethiopia. She, of course, has roots in Somalia. This is the new spirit of Africa. We are integrating. I think we've heard that on many occasions this morning, different speakers. And this is why Ethiopia and 20 other African countries created the bank called the Trade and Development Bank. We are investment grade rated. We issue bonds all around the world. We do sukuks in the Gulf. Of course, we have listed bonds throughout Europe. We, we issue uh, Japanese samurai loans. We raise money from China, so we're very global in terms of our footprint and how we raise funding. You cannot be a bank and not have finances to make entrepreneurs and projects happen. Just to give you a sense, we're almost 40 years old. We've funded many projects and enterprises here in Ethiopia, as well as across the region. Ethiopian Airlines, we've done steel, steel projects here in Ethiopia. We've done cement projects. We've done agro uh, industry projects, the coffee area. We've done real estate projects, we've done tourism projects uh, in terms of hotels. And over the past couple of years, ever since the bold reforms Ethiopia has begun, we have thrown our weight behind the financial sector. We are financing at least five banks, including the Commercial Bank of Ethiopia, to support trade uh, and the SME sector as well. So we've been very active. We don't just... Uh, philosophize on issues of trade and investment. We're very practical and we, we do a great deal. Uh, it's a very, very different picture today. We've heard the, pe the previous speakers make references to that. Not everybody knows that uh, in 2050, one out of four people in the world will be African. One out of three young people will be African. We've heard about the numbers of one and a half or so billion that we have today. In 2100, Africa will have about 4.3 billion people. It's a market nobody can ignore under any circumstances. And since the millennium, with the exception of the one or two years around COVID, it's been a 20 year run, a great run for Africa where we've had very significant positive economic growth beyond the growth rate of the population. I'll begin by extending our heartfelt appreciations and sincere thanks to the organizers and a special thanks to both state ministers. We in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs as a connecting bridge, acting as a connecting bridge between Ethiopia 
and the rest of Africa were always happy to see investors investing in Ethiopia. Yes, of course, we are the political city of uh, Africa, diplomatic one as well. But also we want to project Ethiopia as an investment hub. We are working on that, but this is, this is a project that the Minister of Foreign Affairs or even Ethiopia by itself cannot do. We need help with the private investors. We as a diplomatist from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, regardless of our positions and rank, we are supposed to act as economic agents. Economy, especially investment in trade is the central piece of our economy. I think I was not prepared. I, I, I actually wanted to be a very good listener but next time I assure you that we will be more than happy as the Minister of Foreign Affairs to come with our uh, opinion concerning Ethiopian investment opportunities. May I take this opportunity once again to thank the organizers and especially my special thanks to our ministers, state ministers and our special guests as well. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Salam alaikum. I would like to start to recognize our Minister of Trade, the Minister of Industry of Ethiopia, and all the other guests who are here, protocol observed. You know me, I always talk about that I come from my Somali background, where when I, I grew up, I was told not to be seen or not to be heard. But I think this opportunity to be here is because of what I have done. <laughs> so I just uh, want to say, much of the things I wanted to, in fact, I had written a, a speech, but I realized that I will be repeating most of what has been said by the people are before me, and especially uh, Tedese, who knew me for the last 15 years, who trusted me with money. And actually, the apartments you are seeing there, it was funded by PTA Bank. So I'm happy he could recognize and say it about me. So I want again to really congratulate my, the country called Ethiopia. What I have seen here with the investment authority, what uh, they have uh, produced, I think whether it's the industry, the last, I was very, very, I was actually taking even note and saying that uh, Africa, I didn't know Africa, we have moved. But now today, I think I'll sleep and see that Africa, we are ready for investments. Africa, we are ready for all the opportunities because now we have new technologies. Those jokes of uh, using holes and that is not there because what I saw is we are now above our small thinking and our backgrounds of just thinking about subsistence farming, only what to eat, but I think now we are ready on commercial. We are ready to see that uh, we are integrated because I saw the Minister of Integration, that we are able to do business within ourselves. I have to thank the organize, organizers who even asked me to come. And I really think this is a very good opportunity and what we have learned, especially I have learned and taken back home to say, Africa, the free trade we are talking about is already being seen in Ethiopia. Thank you very much. Representing Rest Microfinance, I would like to take you back a few years uh, to 2019, where in some parts of Ethiopia, it was 
very difficult to make one single transaction uh, to either buy stuff, send money to your family, where we just came in. So Race Microfinance established by 2014, we have started with uh, regular microfinancing, where we were focusing on uh, the like lending, uh, collecting deposits, and like starting the regular microfinancing, where we realized that the financial corridor was very tight, and it was taking people days, uh, if not weeks, to make transactions from like one town to the next one. So we have decided to make studies about what we can change on the financial inclusion of the people who are living in the border areas, uh, especially in the remote areas. So uh, we've come up with starting a mobile and agency banking, Sahai Pay, uh, as you may have seen it's on uh, boards or somewhere else. So with Sahai Pay, we have managed to create a financial corridor where we were able to connect markets, uh, traders, because uh, especially in the Somali region of Ethiopia, where most of the banks were not focusing, uh, we have achieved to get a customer base of more than 1 million customers. And uh, since the, we have got the license from the National Bank of Ethiopia by 2020, uh, we have achieved more than 100 billion bir in transaction volume, doing an uh, average of 300 million bir a day. This, this shows us that we have uh, connected the markets, especially for uh, pastoralists in the Somali region, agro-pastoralists, and those who are uh, working on the agricultural sector. So by doing this, we, we have achieved to help a lot of young entrepreneurs by providing uh, financial loans. So Race Microfinance basically focus on the Islamic uh, compliant financing where most of the Eastern part of Ethiopia are Muslim dominant areas. So in those, in those places, stories from uh, our clients uh, shows us that some of the camel herders, for example, in order for them to receive money from either people who bought their, their camels or to just send back money to their families, they had to travel at least 100 kilometers to find the financial institution, which we learned that the banks were focusing on the corporate uh, side of uh, banking, where we have learned that the lower part of the pyramid were left out. So we had to come up with a plan to be more of financially inclusive uh, company, to include those who were financially excluded by providing both the digital uh, mobile wallet and at the same time, the Islamic uh, financial services, which are uh, basically interest-free uh, lending. So in the Somali region and the Eastern Ethiopia, today we have achieved to create a cashless society by making sure that at least everyone does a transaction and that transaction goes to digital uh, platforms. So our digital platform, Sahaipay, is in-house developed platform, which Race Microfinance owns 100% vendor free. So with Sahaipay, we have achieved to create uh, a merchant network of more than 18,000 merchants in Ethiopia, both in Central Ethiopia and the Eastern part of Ethiopia. And with that merchant network, we have achieved to create uh, market links in between buyers and sellers, producers and consumers. With this network, we have at the same time achieved to help uh, small and medium-sized uh, enterprises by providing both the market network and at the same time the means for them to move their money and to collect the their sales back digitally where they do not have to travel as they used to. So, Salamno and good morning and good afternoon. Your Excellence, the Ministers of Ethiopia, Excellencies, the participants from Africa, business people. I am 
who the director, I'm the director general, the Central Bank of Somaliland. On behalf of my delegations from Somaliland, thank you very much for your warm welcome. And it is pleasure to me on the Central Bank of Somaliland to be part of the Africa Trade and Investment Summit. The investment has been an itching of economic growth and creating jobs and generating income. And it is the main ingredients for awakening and sustaining the dynamics of change that allow the societies to combat poverty and achieve shared prosperity. As we know, we don't have more time, but I want to summarize my speech. The Bank of Somaliland is very delighted that Africa understands the important trade and investment between the African countries. I would like to see here a brief comment about Somaliland banks and financial opportunities. Somaliland is a new opportunity country in the Horn of Africa, and it is a developing country. Every sector is full of potential investment and capable international business people or business investors. So that's why Somaliland needs to open and establish international commercial banks, international investment banks, and international development banks. And I'm sure that our local business people can benefit and deal with the foreign investors. And finally, if we are the government of Somaliland, we pledge to facilitate all financial platforms that international banks need to invest in our country. So, as we know, we don't have more time. Thank you very much. How you listen? Thank you very much for your attention. Good afternoon, Mr. Gushe Kastis, your Excellencies of Ministers, fellow delegates, ladies and gentlemen, all of you, good afternoon. It's a great honor and privilege to be here today at African, at Africa Trade and Investment Summit in Ethiopia. I'm here to represent the Somalia Ministry of Investment and Industrial Development. It's a government institution that's responsible for formulating and, implement, and implementing policies and strategies, strategies and programs aimed at developing local and foreign investment. Improving the investment image of the country, quickly creating opportunities for entrepreneurs and cooperating in socio-economic development programs with United Nations and international organizations. Somaliland is a country with a large economic potential and immense business opportunities, the development of new markets, besides the fact that it's placed with a number of natural resources a fast expanding economy and a growing middle class. It's also well known for the exceptional hospitality of its inhabitants. Somalia maintains a strong system of investment rights and straightforward corporate law where investors will get adequate protection and benefit for their investment. Somaliland is also committed to regional integration and cooperation as we believe that the investment are the key drivers of economic growth and development in Africa. We are open to dialogue and partnership with our neighbors and other African countries as well as with the rest of the world we are ready to share our experience and best practice as well as 
to learn from others. We are also keen to participate in regional initiatives and platforms that promote trade and investment facilitation, such as the African Continental Free Trade Area, the African Union Agenda 2063, and the Sustainable Development Goals. One of the key objectives of the Minister of Investment of the Mainland is to encourage and facilitate both foreign and local investment by providing information, fostering coordination and networks between the investors, and continually exploring new opportunities in Somalia that would benefit both the nation and the business community. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining us on this summit. We will head on to the panel discussion of the day. The titles of the panel discussions are Investing in Ethiopia's Manufacturing, Mining, Agriculture and Other Emerging Sectors and also Opportunities and Economic Challenges Shaping Africa's Future. We are very proud to have with us our esteemed guests and experts in their, resp in their respective fields. Our panelists are His Excellency Mr. Asma Bella Elenya, advisor for the Ethiopian Minister of Industry and Ethiopia Tamarat Expo Project Office Coordinator. Our uh, second panelist is His Excellency Dr. Kutteta, I'm sorry, Dr. Kutan Lekesa, General Director of Mineral Industry and Development Institutes in the Ethiopian Ministry of Mines. And our third panelist is Dr. Amina Harsi Moge, CEO of Korean Investment Holding Company. And our fourth panelist is Mr. Abdinasa Turkey, Chairman and CEO of the Investment Center of Africa. Uh, on behalf of the Investment Center, it is my pleasure again to welcome this honorable guests who participate in this panel discussion, presenting their ideas and opinion and experience and shedding light on important topics including investing in Ethiopia's manufacturing, mining, and agricultural and other emerging sectors will present it in the following by question and answer. And also we have another subject, opportunities and economic challenges shaping Africa's future. Before that, I would like to give the opportunity to the companies participating in this summit, also in this panel discussion, to speak and provide an introductory overview of the companies and commercial activities. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, my name is Nursel Aslan. Here I am representing Technostyle and PLC. Uh, the company is a manufacturer of uh, furniture, foam, and uh, spring mattress uh, for hotels of home and hospitality. Uh, uh, I thank you very much for this panel. I had a very good network. Really, it opened uh, my mind in some issues. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Sertina. I am uh, here representing uh, two companies. One is the French Manufacturers Association. I'm leading the company as a vice president. And I'm also uh, representing White Furniture, which is a local manufacturing uh, in uh, the furniture business. We've been in the business for 34 years and growing. I'm a second generation. So uh, regarding the challenge within the furniture manufacturer is one of the thing is we've been dependent on foreign currency and uh, there is a huge demand for joint venture within the association. So we want to be able to find more interested parties uh, who are based in other countries who will be able to at least help us uh, mitigate the problem of the dollar, the foreign currency by partnering with us and also their experience is also valuable. Thank you very much. My name is Mohamed Asad. I'm here to represent Sonatel International. It's a telephone company of the Abushi Group. Uh, I'm also representing the Abushi Group as its company uh, <coughs> that works in finance, banking, telecom, import export, uh, logistics, shipping, all these things. So we can be a good platform that you, whoever is here, whoever is listening to us, that we can facilitate everything that you might need to 
transact the financial, to transfer, to make a deal as we have more than 270 representatives around the world. Besides, in East Africa, we are uh, Sonka, it's a technology-based company. We have platforms that can facilitate all these payments. We have uh, a telco company that can be working with, with uh, these platforms. We have a SaaS service as a software as a service. And uh, besides this, I am here to say that we are glad to be here and participate. And also, I'm uh, also thankful for our uh, for our uh, development representative who are here, who have informed us to be part of this one. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Next, we have the report CDS. Hello, my name is Sidi, and I'm the chairman of Oil Markets. We are a British company, and since four years, we invested or start investing in Ethiopia. Uh, we are owner of marble mines and manufacturers of for, uh, spare parts, small car and truck spare parts. And our first investment in Ethiopia was uh, to open um, truck tan factory here. And our investments will follow next month with spare parts. And uh, of we have to uh, research the market before. I'm really happy that Mr. Turkey invited us to be here because uh, he was planning to invest also in other countries like Somalia, Somalia and it was a great, I'm really happy to be here because I met uh, interesting people um, and thank you again for the invitation. Thank you very much, sir. I think we have one more person and we will get into the panel discussion. Madam, please introduce yourself. Hello for all of you. My name is Uma Kukulukar. We have a cover of agriculture and rural rural area. We have a rural investment. So my question is how can we pay for Ethiopia investments to collaborate that company? Thank you. Thank you very much. We will go ahead on to the panel discussion. First, in the opportunities and economic challenges shaping Africa's future, I would like to hear from Dr. Amina Ersimoke, CEO of Oria Investment Holding Company. What ideas and thoughts do you have on opportunities and economic challenges shaping Africa's future? The biggest challenge we have is that uh, is the financial. Uh, in the financial sector is that they only give credit on a commercial way. So the commercial tax which they give for, for a project which is a lot of where you get your investment, maybe after 10 years or 15 years, and they group your investment, they will want to give you line of credit like for five years without even a grace period. So immediately they give you the money, they immediately also want to start collecting. And this is what happened to me, and I got a lot of problems. The other one is the interest rates are very, very high. So for us to capture this opportunity, or production, to, to feed ourselves and also to take the outside market, I think the biggest cha challenge we have is, is cost of, of financing. So, and another thing, now also the population of women, we are big, we are also contributing into families. So the, the husband and the man must work so that we are able to build our families. But now we find again women are not allowed to take any credit. Women are looked at, they cannot borrow because we don't have securities, the men are not accepted. So I think all this has to be looked at. And it happened to me because uh, nobody was trusting me. 
that uh, what I am able to do is possible. But because I come from a, a family which was already in a financial and uh, in, in a background of business and they had a credit history and what they have done, that is what helped me to move where I am. But if I was not running my family business, I don't think if I left school, I was able to be trusted. The other big advantage I was told to say we have a very big, vibrant uh, population which is young and ready to learn and also to take opportunities which is there. So I would uh, say still with the, the positive side Africa is ready for, for production, Africa is ready to transform and also to take market beyond Africa. First of all, we want to do the, uh, the business because we need ourselves and also to do beyond. Which any investor who is here, I would like again to really, really encourage that we are ready and we have our own opportunity, we have our own market because we have, like Africa, we have more than one with open <laughs> So now with the Africa trade opening, I can see now like me, I came with a Kenyan passport and I was able to come to Ethiopia and go to my visa just on arrival. So this is showing it is the best areas to, to invest and that's what I can give you my little experience. Thank you very much, Dr. Amina, for the insightful speech about opportunities and economic challenges shaping Africa's future. Next, I would like to go to His Excellency uh, Mr. Asfar Munayu, advisor for the Energy Minister of Industry and Ethiopia Town Expo Project Office Coordinator. Uh, please introduce yourself and the office you represent, some of the new uh, works that you've been involved in, and please try to answer some of the questions that have been raised in terms of infrastructure, foreign currency, access to finance, and uh, export opportunities. Thank you. First of all, I would like to say thank you for this type of uh, collaboration and integration between different countries and uh, the potential for Africa trade and investment summit, which is very helpful for each of countries to get enough information and to create network between different countries. Thank you, Abdi, for the uh, contribution for what you are bringing us in the same, uh, in the same platforms. So this regard, uh, what is first uh, to introduce my name? My name is Aspo Abdullah, and I'm a, uh, a Minister of Industry, the Minister Advisor, as well as this Ethiopia Tablet Movement. This is in Amharic, when we convert this word into English, let Ethiopia produce movement. We are starting, starting from last year and uh, after launching by our Prime Minister for the last one year we are working how we can able to integrate between different institutions to solve the problem of manufacturing sector. Not only to solve the problem of or the challenge of manufacturing sector but also to create uh, better uh, place or uh, to create uh, more fertile ground for the manufacturing investment. In this regard, we are doing a lot of things. We are creating movement from the higher level up to the grassroots levels, and we got a lot of opportunities. Even after COVID 19 and after the conflict between inside the country and outside. Uh, international problems, many uh, industries are closed. And after this movement, we able to open and to start the closed industries. And the new industries also, they came and they start invest in Ethiopia. So in this regard, 
this type of problem which is very helpful to solve the challenge of the industries and to create fertile ground for the new investors and the existing ones. And finally, we will hope after uh, some times we will transform from agricultural economy to industrial economy. And with this ambition, we are collaborating, integrated with different institutions to solve the problems which face the manufacturing sectors. I'd like to go to our panelists, His Excellency Dr. Gutale Gessen, General Director of Mineral Industry and Development Institute at the IFEDRI Minister of Mines. Can you please introduce yourself and uh, the ministry that you're representing, as well as some of the opportunities that are there in your areas of expertise? Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellencies. Uh, Welcome to Ethiopia, and I'm glad to have you here. Uh, my name is Guta Leggese. By profession, I'm an economist and an assistant professor at Addis Ababa University, Department of Economics. Uh, recently, I joined Ministry of Mines as a director of an institute. Uh, it's a newly established institute that supports uh, the business aspect of uh, the mining sector. Uh, we are supporting companies, uh, other government bodies, regional organizations, and regional entities in terms of technology, human resource, market related issues, and policy aspects. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the closing remarks of the Africa Trade and Investment Summit 2023. It gives me great pleasure to invite to you to the stage Mr. Abdul Razak Siad Abdi, Chief Conference Officer of the Investment Center of Africa. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Abdul Razak Siad with a round of applause. Thank you very much. It has been a very fruitful and great day, and we are to conclude and come to the final words of uh, closing remarks. Uh, honorable Gustis, uh, I would like to give and pay special tribute and gratitude to the CEO of uh, Aikwa, Abdel Nasser, Turkey, uh, who was the brain behind this digital platform that brought us together from all over the world. This is the fairest summit that we held in Africa, but this is not the last. As you have seen in our brochure, this is going to be an annual event. And we will announce very soon, and you'll receive through, through your contacts that we collected, the, when our next summit will be. So every year we might pick up a capital of Africa and elsewhere. So I would like to thank also our sponsors uh, also, the government officials of the federal government, Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, for hosting and for partnership and supporting. And also, I would like to mention and underline that uh, this will be a continuous event to keep bringing investors and also entrepreneurs from all of the all of the globe, introduce them to each other, exchange expertise and knowledge, and also to uh, give an opportunity the Ethiopia and, and Africa and the globe, uh, that there is a chance for them to be introduced and also to learn from each other. And we'd like to express our gratitude for your attendance, participation. I would like to say thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for honoring us and also accepting our invitation. Until next event, thank you very much.